Today we're going to be talking about tripods. All like, right, come harder now. Right? <laughs> I know. Right. I'm gonna break. I'm gonna be like, there'll be fear all over you. <laughs> so, welcome back to Photography After Hours. Today, we're gonna be talking about tripods and the carbon type versus aluminum type. First, I'd like to introduce everyone. We have not Sprague. We have Steven, <laughs> um, Susie, Scott, and my name is Nick. And we are the crew that's gonna be discussing this. And we are sponsored by PAC, the Photographers Adventure Club. So, check them out on photoadvclub.com. So there is a couple of different types of devices to stabilize your camera, one of them being tripods that we're going to talk about today. <laughs> couple different devices. Several different tripods devices. Tripods your main one. <laughs> you have monopods, you yep. have dudes, sandbags. Yep. sandbags. Oh, yeah. yeah, there's all kinds Put of stuff. Put it on a bean bag. You get Rocks. those little flexible that, things. Yep. You see that thing on Facebook, the, the roller thing for the big long oh, yeah, 1200 yeah, millimeter lens. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so today we're not going to talk about any of those. We're going to talk about <laughs> carbon and <laughs> aluminum and what the benefits or non-benefits or what are the drawbacks. drawbacks. Benefits and drawbacks. Yeah, non-benefits. <laughs> I like to call them non-benefits. We call them drawbacks. <laughs> minuses. Potato, potato. Yeah, pluses pluses and, minuses. and minuses. There you go. So. Um, so we want to talk about those and give you a little bit of insight of what we do, why we do it, and what you maybe should um, look for when you're purchasing one of these, because mm -hmm. they aren't that cheap, some of them. So yeah. it's a significant investment. I think that uh, a little research about the features of tripods and uh, you know what the selections are out there before you actually put your money down is uh, time well spent. So, so one of the things I'd like to throw right out there before we even start into any of that is the one that comes with your camera for free, the aluminum little thing with the, those are video tripods and they're worth about eight cents in Japan or China somewhere and you just need to get rid of it. Never put a, you know, thousand to thirty five hundred dollar device on top of something that's worth like less than 15 bucks. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, it's not a good idea. It's it, you, someone bumps into it at a photo walk or a star shoot or something else, or you're just out and the wind starts to blow like we were talking about earlier, you're going to lose your whole investment. So, you know, the reason we're talking about tripods is you want something that's going to be sturdy enough to hold the expensive device mm -hmm. you're putting on top. So does anyone disagree with that? Not no. at all. Nope. Not I've seen so many people come with that little aluminum mm -hmm. video tripod with the handle on the yeah, back. Yeah, it's rated for about like one pound yeah. and they're putting Tops. like eight pounds worth of stuff Got on the it plastic mm -hmm. foot yeah. on it and and all plastic yeah. parts it's and, just it's well, none of them might... fit well in the whole thing you can yeah. push it six inches in either direction with your thumb yeah, yeah so it you might think that it. just because the screw fits the bottom of your camera that it's fit for your for holding your camera and it's really not it's fit for little handy cam like those mm -hmm. little tiny it's sony handy cam little that's point about and it. shoot little yeah point it's nice for holding up signs it's not much good for anything <laughs> that's about else it. yeah yeah. So, um, so you know, you shouldn't you, just again. You're investing in a lot of money in equipment. Even if you're buying an entry level DSLR, it's you know eight hundred to a thousand dollars, and you shouldn't be putting mm -hmm. it on something like that. So don't, don't, don't get fall into that. Oh, I got this free tripod. Just mm -hmm. put it on eBay, put it on Craigslist, get rid of it, and get something worthwhile. So, Susie, you brought this whole topic up. So, yeah. um, do you see that people should go for carbon or, or aluminum? Well, I think there are benefits to carbon fiber. Uh, tripods and it's I, I what I would hesitate to say is that it's essential across the board for everyone and there are benefits and drawbacks to carbon fiber versus aluminum um, and I think that each person needs to make the decision for themselves but carbon fiber are more and more prevalent out there it used to be that there were only a few to choose from and we have a lot more options now these days and I think it's worth, you know, kind of discussing um, the the key points about how to make your decision. Okay, so one of the things we want to talk about is corrosion. Mm -hmm. So um, does anyone want to elaborate a little bit more on that as far as you have your aluminum that can, mm -hmm. can corrode and get gunked up and everything? Yeah, other metallic um, uh, structure or uh, the met metallic composition of tripods can break down when you expose them to the elements a little bit more than carbon fiber. So carbon fiber is very weather resistant. Um, it's going to resist corrosion when it's exposed to salt water, salt air, things like that. Um, and other metals are not necessarily. And you may have 
fittings that break down and things like that. So if you're looking to make an investment in a tripod, have it for a number of years and expose it to a lot of environmental changes. So out in the dry desert, uh, in the ocean surf, things like that, then I would recommend going with something that's carbon fiber. So weight-wise, do you think, um, is there a noticeable difference between a carbon fiber weight-wise versus aluminum or steel? Speaking as a backpacker, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I have I have three different tripods, and one is for backpacking, and it's definitely carbon fiber. Yeah. That heavy-duty aluminum thing is just pulling you back, and it's just more well, than you see, want to see, that's, that's, to me, is the only reason why I have a, a carbon fiber tripod. I actually prefer the, the heavy-duty ones. I mean... The one that I have, I've had for 25 years, it's an old Bogan professional tripod. Mm -hmm. It weighs about 25 pounds. It's heavy. It's bulletproof. But when you plant that <laughs> thing. in Arizona. Yeah. <laughs> when you it's plant solid, that thing, right? it, it does not move at yeah. all. It is mm -hmm. solid as a rock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Larry I, just brought one yeah. down. I have one in the closet there. It, mine has a video head on it, but yeah, it's an old Bogan slash Manifrotto when they had. And those, in. and and really, what you want in a tripod, if you want the ultimate stability, you actually want a heavy tripod. You want that thing to be planted. <laughs> I'm I mean, thinking about who are you thinking about, Eric English? Oh yeah, Eric. Yeah, he <laughs> comes out carrying this tripod and he he hikes with that thing we ten went, miles through Havasu. Yeah, we went to the bottom of Havasu and he. <laughs> But the whole way you know he what? That this huge tripod. tripod. But you know what? He knows what he's doing sure. because because he understands that mm -hmm. stability is important and that yeah he's now, getting rock understand solid there's a helicopter shots. they can fly it in for him. And well, he flew out. it. He's the only one uh, yeah, flew it. <laughs> screw yeah. hiking. Well, if, yeah, well, well, you might hike when you can fly. With, with your history in Havasu, I'm not surprised. <laughs> yes. well, well, he hiked in with me. No, and but he flew in. But that's not to say I I also have a carbon fiber tripod. Yeah, but. The reason why I have it is because it's small, it's compact, mm -hmm. it's lightweight, and it is sturdy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And usually when you have that combination of, of compact, lightweight, mm -hmm. and sturdy, it also means that it's also very expensive. It sure is. And so, yeah, I, I spent a lot more on my carbon yeah. fiber tripod than on my aluminum one, yeah. even though my aluminum one I bought 25 right. years ago and it's still good. Yeah. I don't know how long this one will last. It'll probably last a long time. Sure. But the reason why I got it is because I can carry it with me. I, ca I take it to right. weddings. I do use it at weddings, believe mm -hmm. it or not. I use it for landscape. I, and so my whole philosophy with that is that a tripod's only going to be as good if you have it with you. Mm -hmm. And that's what the carbon yeah. fiber So in do summary, for. Scott's covered every point we have left. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. I mean, it's yeah, just it's, that's my personal take on it. I agree. Is that, you know... Yeah, it's um, and and I think you've touched on several things that that warrant a little bit further um, explanation too. So, the lightweight, compact design, and for carbon fiber, when you get more lightweight, the benefit of it being carbon fiber is it's still sturdy, and you still get vibration reduction in it, um, but you're not having to have the bulk of another metal. In order to get that stability, I just like that. Um, so you have now. it with you. That's great. I didn't it's know bulletproof. They were bulletproof. <laughs> <laughs> I never well, market it. I pulled it the, the, the good, well, the, <laughs> other, the other good thing is yeah. they do have. If you get the right, you know, carbon fiber tripod, mm -hmm. they do have the hook underneath. Yeah. So even though they're still lightweight, yeah. if you get one that's sturdy, it can still be lightweight. You want to anchor it. You can you can hang your mm -hmm. your bag underneath it and that'll weigh it down and well, that's how yes you can... and no so yeah. like i for most instances i would say yes but i mm -hmm. storm chase and i have this epically awesome shot of lightning coming down and hitting the steeple at the um mercy gilbert hospital mm -hmm. where like the cross was the there cross, yeah. and i was like oh it's awesome and it looked great on the back of my screen till i got home and i was like and and I bring my heavy bogan one out now because that mm -hmm. thing is like a beast and it weighs a ton. So well, it, and you could weight it down with the bag too. But yeah. the wind was blowing so hard where I was that it was shaking my camera. I well, just got it set up. The I wind opened will it. blow the bag even yeah. and introduce more movement to the setup. Yeah. In some situations, so you have to you know you have to be case by case. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, you have to decide. So vibration, I think, use. you know, yeah. the tripod, like you said, is supposed to be sturdy and like Eric's mm -hmm. can hold up like the Empire State mm -hmm. Building. That thing is yeah. like ridiculous. But if you're shooting steel. by, I mean, even when you're talking about vibration reduction, it's uh, it's almost imperceptible vibration that you're reducing, right? But if you were shooting on the edge of a babbling brook or whatever and just the movement, the slight movement of the ground beneath your feet and things like that, the tripod's going to do a better job of mitigating that. Well, in the rivers in, at Havasu Pipe, yeah. you're in the river. I'm mm -hmm. sure his pictures are sharper than ours because yeah. he's this big steel tripod that he's mm -hmm. in the river. River's going by where mm -hmm. our carbon fiber ones are shaking because the yeah. river's moving. So one's going to be better than the other in different situations. situations yeah. yeah. But back to the price point, um, carbon fiber tripods are decidedly more expensive. They're at least double, I would mm -hmm. say, sometimes more. Yeah, at least. Uh, that being said, I've had mine for years, years and years, and it's like new. Really, yeah, I've well, had mine. I've, I've had mine for days. a while. It's got a couple of nicks, but the, yeah, yeah. The downside, the piece that we left out is that when you cross, I don't know what the threshold is, three hundred dollars, four hundred dollars for a tripod, but it doesn't come with a head. Yeah. Right. And so now you've got a shot for that second piece, which mm -hmm. you also can be need another three hundred dollars. I actually to, prefer sure. that though, because I yeah, because the head itself is is um that's a that's a huge personal preference because mm -hmm. i've had i've had the ball heads and i like the ball head it's fast you know it's good it's it's mm -hmm. fast adjustment but my favorite one is the one that i actually i bought a second hand one or, or a third aftermarket one mm -hmm. for my for my aluminum one I, it's not really a ball head but it's a it's a three axis head and then you can do m macro adjustment to get the the major movement but then you can then dial in micro adjustments mm -hmm. on all three axes. Mm -hmm. So you can really dial that thing in on X, Y, and Z axes and really, you know, get it precision. If you were doing I mean, macro can, yeah. photography, the micro adjustments would really help you there. Right. Whereas a ball head, you're always struggling with mm -hmm. it. You're just kind of like, you yeah. know. Some of them don't. Mine, mine, I have a Manfrotto one. And um, at first it was great, but as I got bigger cameras and bigger lenses, it, it doesn't hold it anymore. It's yeah, it kind of slips. Yeah. Like, so I have to put my 7200 up here to get a shot here because I put it up here and it goes it drops all the time. Even if yeah. I put it on the collar, so you just mount yeah. it on the collar, right. it still doesn't. It, it and drops you, and it you drives find yourself me nuts. on the phone going, "You got a bigger one? You got a bigger but one?" But see, that's yeah. when when you lock it down. That's why I like the ball head because then I can make a micro adjustment and then. Put it right, you know, back, where it's put it right back where it needs to well, be. Well, and sometimes you know. people like uh, the heads that have like a pistol grip adjustment. Yeah, and, yeah I got rid of that mine. kind of thing. Just you know, it just depends. I had it. I, so. It seemed great at first, like model shoots, because it's quick. You grab it and you let go, but it, it always slipped. It always would. It would. It would give. Right. The model or the the particular brand and model that you had probably did. It doesn't necessarily mean it was the they same. All it was the same one. I bought the Manfrotto yeah. pistol grip and the Manfrotto mm -hmm. ball head. Um, I'm not particularly, f I like the legs, but I'm not particularly fond of either head right now. You know, I'm, I, I was, mm -hmm. but I kind of seemed like after using them for so long, it's kind of annoying me that they, they don't, they don't hold. Like mm -hmm. you tighten it down. I can't tighten it down anymore without breaking the knob off and they just won't lock in. Mm -hmm. And I, I look at Sprague who's got really right stuff and he's like, oh, look, it glides and it locks in. But right. It's so 600 it, it, bucks. It depends the, on the brand that you The really right stuff or Kirk. And I've used both. Mm -hmm. Not mine. Cause yeah, but I they're double that. the price of what we well, have. Well, they're five to $600 each just for the head. Just for the and head. You, and then you've still got to go at five, $600 tripod. We could do well, an I would entire keep my, episode on just Once Once you lock heads. that thing in, it's actually... It's locked it in, yeah, which has impressed me, and that's why I'm not so interested in mine anymore. But you know what? You know, you get what you pay for with anything, you yeah. know? So if you start out with the one that's built onto it, you kind of outgrow that, and you go to what I went to, and then you eventually outgrow that. You know, and what they a lot of people are saying is like, well, buy it once, you know, yeah, so get see, the best you can and buy yeah, it once. That's my philosophy. There's something to be said for that, because I did kind of bite the bullet at the time when I bought my tripod and I kind of thought ahead. I was like, well, OK, well, this is kind of a lot of money right now for the legs and the head. And I got a case. And I don't even like to use it. That kind of thing. <laughs> well, and, they, they're but, necessary. But I, I mean, needed mm -hmm. and I got a configuration. I kind of thought my way through it, too. And I got a configuration where it packs down real light. I've traveled everywhere with it. It's been in the desert. It's been right in the sand, in the water, in the surf. Um, it's taken a beating and it looks like, like I said, it still works like it's brand new and it's worth the money 
to do that. And I, I can't say that an aluminum tripod would have held up yeah. like this. I don't know. Mine has. Yeah. My, like I said, mine's 25 years old. Well, that's and, a big one. Yeah, it's yeah. a commercial one, not a, not an entry level or beginner. Well, well yeah. One. See, yeah. well, my whole thing is, is that I've seen this with a lot of people, and my advice to them is just if you've got the money, go ahead and get a quality, mm -hmm. you know, tripod because yeah. otherwise you're, you're going to end up with the quality tripod anyways. Mm -hmm. It's just you're going to eventually go through yeah. the crappy ones, how many, how many and gonna then you're eventually going to go, okay, I need to get the good one anyway. So yeah. just go ahead and get the good one. That's where I'm and at. And it's going to last. Mm -hmm. I mean. Yep. Well, well, and I think that if it's bigger, easily. if it's a bigger one and you're not going to be hiking around with it and stuff, you're, I mean, or even if you are going to hike with it, you're willing to carry it, the bigger build of it, then it's less important as to whether it's aluminum or carbon fiber, because it's going to have enough weight to it that the vibration reduction that it's going to give you is negligible in comparison. It's going to be sturdy enough like your aluminum model is probably comparable yeah, to something that's carbon fiber equivalent but if you're like, going for like a light travel one um for instance i have a very popular colorful little aluminum travel tripod Chinese not and for... you can tell the difference in the images in the image sharpness because of those tiny movements especially in distant like if I'm doing landscapes, you can tell a little bit of a sharp. They bounce difference. too. The cameras bounce with yeah. those at least once. Well, the thing is, it's, it's but there's also a misconception. A lot of people think that like tripods are only for landscape, Depending you know. On. And you know, you, you like Joel Grimes. Mm -hmm. he, he will not shoot like if he's in the studio. His camera is always mounted to a tripod. Sure, Michelle work. Santana yeah. too. She just wants to be out in front it. of the camera yeah. and not not be you know yeah. behind it. Exactly. So. You know, a lot of people think it's one of those things. It's like eventually you're going to need a tripod mm -hmm. and you're going to need a good one eventually unless you, you know, you just, you're going to, yeah. don't essential. do the trial and error thing. Just go ahead and get yourself a good one. Yeah. Whether or not you want an aluminum one or a tri or, or a carbon fiber one, um, you know, the carbon fiber one mm -hmm. is really nice. Because, I mean, nowadays they have the ones that are, I, they're, yeah, they're rock solid. Yeah, I think solid. there they're, are more yep. benefits to having the carbon fiber model if you do a lot of travel and outdoor photography and stuff like that. In the studio. Yeah. If you're a landscaper, you're going to end yeah. up in the water sooner or later. Yeah, yeah. and I think that, that I think that the benefit probably is there in the Well, it's like camping. The, you know, you, you have know, car camping weight. and then you have backpack camping. You know, are you going to yeah. carry the car camping stuff backpacking? No, you're going to carry the smallest little tiny stoves. And when mm -hmm. we go car camping, we're bringing stoves up bigger than this table. Mm -hmm. You yeah, know, so, so you want the best quality in terms of performance, but you want it compact and lightweight, and you're going to have to spend a little bit more in order to get that. Well, Always. it's like everything in photography. You need two of everything. <laughs> you really do. <laughs> you do. So, um, so put in the comments whether you, um, whether you have a carbon fiber, whether you have an aluminum, or you're looking at getting one, and uh, you know, we'd be glad to recommend some different ones that we've used, and uh, we'll see you real soon out there. So. Thank you guys Cheers. for tuning in to another episode of After Hours. Mm -hmm.